What's up, sports rehab experts? Today we are in the clinic and we're gonna be talking about how your anterior hip pain can be related to your foot as well as your posture. Two things to kind of consider and how both of them could be uh, giving you clues as far as what you need to do in your rehabilitation to take away and relieve some of your hip pain in the front of the hip. This is also something very common that I see in people with hip impingement type symptoms. So what we're going to be talking about, I'll put a picture up here, is the uh, kind of where the individual holds their center of mass. So this is a common presentation that again you'll see for cases who have anterior hip pain or any type of hip impingement like symptoms. They like to hold their pelvis out in front of their feet and as a result because of that pelvis and that forward shift of their pelvis they're going to lean their shoulders backwards and create an extension moment to essentially help hold them upright. This obviously, just from a positional standpoint, can influence somebody's pain um, just because they're hanging out on the front side hip structures all the time. If I'm going to shift my center of mass forward, that's going to elongate all the structures on the front side and it's going to be holding those structures on tension the whole entire time because essentially they're in a stretched position. Think about like a trampoline. When you jump on a trampoline and you, you put pressure down into that trampoline, it's going to spread and expand. That's the exact same thing that's happening if you're holding your center of mass forward out in front of your feet. Uh, and then kind of leaning your shoulders back to help hold you in that position. So all those muscles on the front side are constantly put on a tug or a tension position, which over an extended period of time, if you're not varying that position up enough, that can influence somebody's pain just due to the, the repetitive stressor that happens over an extended period of time. So in many instances, it's about changing the position, changing the orientation of the pelvis to help influence that. Now. The component that many people forget about this is the influence of the foot from the ground back up. So when we look at the foot um, and, and the position that it's going to be in when the pelvis is forward, that is kind of a toe off stage of gait. So the more, if, if we're kind of talking about a gait cycle, like we're putting the left foot in front, uh, that pelvis is going to come over top and rotate over top of that leg and then as they go to push off the pelvis is going to rotate back in the opposite direction as they go into extension. From a front side view we step forward we're going to rotate ourselves over top of that leg and then as we push off the pelvis is going to come back forward again. So uh, what the foot structure tells us is if the hips are out in front of the foot that we are in a toe off position or a resupination, a late phase propulsion position of the foot and we wait more of the midfoot, that's going to help bring the pelvis back over top of us, but also it's gonna put us in a completely different phase of the gait cycle, which is gonna change the, the orientation of the pelvis. So again, if we emphasize more of a heel strike where the tibia is relatively back or um, again if the foot was right here the foot we're going to have uh, a kind of a, a backwards tibia angle or an obtuse angle at the tibia and the the heel uh, and the foot as it's down here this is going to be more of a supination phase whereas someone who has their hips shifted forward that tibia is going to transfer forward and we're going to have an acute angle at the foot here so uh, an exercise that puts us into this position or more of a mid stance position that weights the whole foot is going to help orient the pelvis in a little bit more of that posterior fashion, take a little bit of the stress off of the front side of the hip structure, orient a little bit more into this closed chain hip internal rotation, um, and change the dynamics, change the wear pattern, change the loading pattern um, that the individual has a tendency to present in. So all that we're doing is we're managing tendencies um, and shifting someone's tendency to uh, distribute pressure uh, differently across the kinetic chain to help limit wear patterns and help limit overall uh, workloads, stress loads uh, from a biomechanical standpoint to uh, decrease the stressors that are going to the painful area. So if you're someone who is dealing with anterior hip pain uh, and you notice that your pelvis is out in front of your, your center of mass, center of gravity, Maybe you're in a little bit of that extended posture. You notice a lot of weight going through your forefoot. Uh, and then consider 
exercises that are going to integrate both position of pelvis as well as foot pressure to help start decreasing your pain. Now, some of these exercises are a little bit more advanced than what we can necessarily describe in a 10 minute video. So if this is something that you feel like is contributing to your current issues or pain, if you're watching this video and you are experiencing some discomfort and you would like some help with that, we set up online virtual consults with people all around the globe. So you can set up an appointment by emailing me at greg at sportsrehabexpert.com and we can set up an assessment, a diagnostic session to get, get you a little bit more clarity on exactly what is going on and how we can help you out with that issue and overcome that painful problem. If you're a rehab clinician and you're looking to uh, help individuals who might be dealing with anterior hip pain, we have a couple options for you to take courses from the sportsrehabexpert.com website. We have the Sports Rehab Expert Fast Track course and then we have the Sports Rehab Expert certification which involves two courses, one with the assessment and then one with the treatment. So uh, if you have questions about either one of those, you can look at the sportsrehabexpert.com website um, or you can get a hold of me directly at greg at sportsrehabexpert.com and would be more than happy to provide you with a walkthrough of how both of those courses could help you out and which one might be best for your particular scenario. So hope everyone is having a great day. We'll be back with the next video next week and talking with you soon.